Hi there, folks. Today we'll be doing the science of metal. I'm the mad scientist. <laughs> Alright, we are auditioning for a studio audience since I killed all of them. Oh, by the way, anyone who thought of auditioning is now dead. Um, today, like I said, we will be doing the science of metal. Metal is a mineral. Well, not a mineral, it's a material, that's the word I'm looking for, found in Earth. Let's go to the experimenting place. All right, well, let me go find something to wipe up the water with. Can, uh... Ah! Up. Oh. Pause. All right, I found this frozen in the ground, as you can see. What the hell? The reason why I'm wiping up the water is because metal rusts or oxidates when it comes in contact with water and air. So I don't want that happening. Which is why I'm taking this frozen shirt thing and cleaning up the water. Now while that's drying, we'll be talking about this piece of metal. It appears to be made out of tin or aluminum. Maybe some other kind of um, metal, which... Now, there are many different types of metals. They can be classified into many different types of things. Ferrous and non-ferrous is an example. Ferrous metals contain bits of iron. Non-ferrous metals contain no bits of iron. This is a stick. It is neither. Now, some metals are easily shaped and can be used for wiring, plumbing, tubing, and other things. This one is one of those things. I forgot the word that describes that, but copper is also one of them. <clears throat> oh, mad scientist. It's called ductility. Ductility. Thank you, asshole. You're dead now. Now. Uh, I thought you would cut down with the bad words. You're dead now, banana. Now. This one is easily bent. and broken because it's ductile. <coughs> Banana! But anyways, it can be easily broken in half. Easily shaped into any other shape. Easily cut. Easily welded. And if it contains iron, it will rust. So we're going to be leaving half of it here and the other half in a safe place and see how long it takes for the other half to turn butt ugly. <sighs> just squeeze the water here. God, that's filthy. Now, let's go back to the lab. All right, now, this piece of metal is going to be the control in the experiment. As you can see, I, I hope, on the inside, 
it's already a little bit rusty. Now, back to ferrous and non-ferrous metals. If you want a strong one, either one will be fine. But if you want re rust resistance, buy ferrous. You can find, if you're looking for metal working or blacksmithing or blah, 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 you can find your, if you look online, you might find your local metal recycling plant. You can, some of them, like the one here, are locally owned. Others are part of big Walmart metal brands. Corporations and all that other stuff. So if you're a stupid hippie, go to the, go to the locally owned ones, which sadly is the only one we have here. Or if you don't care, like the rest of us normal people, go to a corporation, if you have one. Now, I am not exactly sure what kind of metal it is, but I'm pretty sure it went to a shower curtain. Um, shower curtains and other, oh wait, this isn't a shower curtain. This is a normal curtain rod. You can tell because of the way it's shaped. As you can see here, it is used to be one long flat piece of metal and it was bent and rounded into a round shape so that it will serve as a rod. Ugh. Another type of metal Metal can be found in chairs, basketball hoops, folding chairs, and clothes hanging body things, along with screws, nuts, and bolts, and chain link fences. Well, I'd say that's about all today. If you would like more information on it, on metal, you either you should either A head to Google or B ask someone you know who works with metal. Bye bye.